Today we are going to talk about Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, an Arduino board with RP2040 microcontroller, created by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Not only does it come with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, but it's also the first Arduino board of its kind to feature Raspberry Pi Silicon. Since this is a details video, it's going to be a little longer, so stay tuned. Welcome to SD Robotics. Arduino is known for its IDE and wide library support, and Raspberry Pi for its optimized architecture. The combination of the former two would be interesting to explore, as Arduino IDE can open up interesting possibilities for Raspberry Pi's SoC. Arduino says, the goal is to enable people to develop connected products leveraging Arduino's hardware powered by Raspberry Silicon, a solid radio module with exceptional performance. Let's have a look at the key features of this development board. It comes with Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller, it's a dual-core 32-bit processor, based on ARM Cortex M0 Plus architecture. Next, we have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. A 6-axis gyroscope and accelerometer, capable of detecting movement, it also comes with a dedicated machine learning core, a cryptographic coprocessor, and an omnidirectional digital microphone, and a lot more. Later on, we will discuss all the components in detail. Let's take a look at the size comparison between equivalent or competing boards of Arduino Nano RP2040. The first board I will talk about is the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, which has the same Wi-Fi module and was released last year. It has the same form factor as the Arduino Nano RP2040. As the name implies, the form factor of the original Arduino Nano will be the same with Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. The Raspberry Pi Pico, which has the same RP2040 microcontroller, is a bit larger because it has more GPIO pins than the Arduino Nano RP2040. The next board is the very popular IoT board, called Node MCU, which is built on ESP8266. It is much larger than the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. And finally, ESP32 which is another very popular IoT board, whose dimensions are identical with the Node MCU board, which means that it is also much larger than the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. Now we will know in detail each component of this microcontroller board. As the name implies, the main component of this development board is the RP2040 microcontroller chip. This is a custom-designed microcontroller chip made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It is very powerful and cost-effective. It has a 32-bit dual-core processor, built on the ARM Cortex M0 Plus architecture. Extremely suitable for parallel processing due to dual-core processor. It can run at a maximum of 133 MHz, although its clock speed is flexible, we can handle it as we like. Built on 40 nanometer architecture which is the smallest of this category of microcontrollers. It has 264 KB of on-chip SRAM. It supports both USB host and device configurations, allowing us to configure it as an HID device such as a keyboard mouse or a variety of other USB devices. It supports 16 MB of flash memory and can be configured in various low-power modes. These low-power shots are extremely helpful when I use them as a battery-powered device. And finally, it has a wide range of GPIO pins that allow us to perform flexible I.O. operations. The next important module is the U-Blocks Nina W102, which provides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity to this development board. We also see the same wireless module in the Arduino Nano 33 IoT development board. This module is nothing more than an ESP32 microcontroller chip inside a new outfit. Since it contains the ESP32 microcontroller chip, the technical specifications of this module are roughly the same as those of the ESP32. It has 520 kilobytes on chip SRAM. It supports Bluetooth 4.2 and single band Wi Fi. The Wi Fi module supports the IEEE 802.11 BGN standard. There is a 16 megabytes flash for code storage. This module uses a built in antenna to strengthen the wireless signal so there is no need to use an external antenna. And lastly, an RGB LED has been added to it. The Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect has an inbuilt LSM6 DSOXTR 6-axis IMU or initial measurement unit. This 6-axis IMU provides data from a 3D gyroscope, as well as a 3D accelerometer built inside it. The library provided for its use can easily detect various types of gestures, such as walking, running, sleeping, etc. It is very helpful to create wearable DIY projects. 
There are also interesting features like pedometer, step counter, motion detection, or tilt detection. One more interesting feature is that it is also possible to do machine learning on the IMU for gesture detection. And finally, it has an embedded temperature sensor. Coming to next, it has a cryptographic coprocessor IC, which is made by Microchip, and its IC number is ATEC 608A. But now the question is, why a cryptographic coprocessor IC has been added to this type of development board? The simplest answer is to remove the burden of hashing, encryption, decryption from the main processor. Hashing is becoming more and more popular among smaller IoT devices, thus adding a dedicated processor provides an edge over other development boards in the same category. It provides secure hardware-based key storage for up to 16 keys in its built-in EEPROM. It supports various hashing algorithms like SHA-256, HMAC, encryption algorithms like AES-128, and many others. It has signature validity for IoT devices, as well as hardware-based random number generator. And it also supports features like secure boot and secure firmware upgrade. This development board has a built-in microphone. MP34DT05 microphone module is based on MEMS or microelectromechanical systems. It is also known as a solid-state microphone. It has an omnidirectional sensitivity with a signal-to-noise ratio of 64 dB. The output data given by this module is in pulse density modulation format and is connected to the RP2040 using an I2C bus. And finally a flash memory IC of 16 MB. This flash memory is connected to the RP2040 via dedicated QSPI bus, which enables it to transfer data to 532 megabits per second. It has 100K program slash erases cycles. The ones I have been discussing for so long are the main components of this development board. But in addition to these, the board also has several subcomponents. As the most interesting component is RGB LED. It is a common anode LED that is connected to the Wi-Fi module so to control this LED we need to use the library of the Wi-Fi module. Like other development boards, it has an orange onboard LED attached with pin 13. There is a micro USB connector that allows us to connect the board to a PC or laptop. There is a reset button, the green power LED, and lastly, there is a voltage regulator that supplies this board with a regulated 3.3 volts. After discussing so many components, we can understand how many components have been integrated into such a small form factor as Arduino Nano. Let's see how these components are connected to each other with the help of block diagrams. First of all, there is a voltage regulator that provides 3.3 volts to the main microcontroller RP2040 and other components of this board. The NINA W102 module is connected to the main microcontroller through three types of communication, I2C, SIP, and UART. The same I2C data bus is used to connect the crypto coprocessor and the 6-axis IMU, respectively. An RGB LED is attached to the NINA W102 module. Come back to the main microcontroller again. The MEMS microphone is directly connected to the microcontroller, which provides the PDM signal to the microcontroller. A 16 MB flash memory, which is also connected to the microcontroller by the QSPI protocol. There is also a micro USB port and a bunch of GPIO pins connected to RP2040 and NINA W102. Let's take a look at the pinout of this development board. There are a total of 14 digital pins on the board, starting from the digital pin D0 all the way up to digital pin D13. Digital pins D0 and D1 are used for serial communication. This Arduino board has 8 analog inputs starting from A0 to A7, in which A0 to A3 are connected to RP2040, and A4 to A7 are connected to the NINA W102 module. Each one of the analog pins is connected to an inbuilt 12-bit analog to digital converter. The I2C connections on pins A4 and A5 are used for connecting to the onboard peripherals and are pulled up with a 4.7K Omega resistor. All of these pins can also be used as digital I.O. pins. Almost all digital and analog pins except A7 and A6 can generate a PWM signal. These digital and analog pins are 5 volts intolerant, so be careful while hooking up sensors and actuators to any of them. The reset button resets the board when pressed. This button is connected to the active low reset pin of the RP2040 microcontroller chip using a pull-up resistor. When the board is powered through the micro USB port, this voltage is reflected at the V in pin also. The acceptable input voltage range is between 5 to 21 volts, 
but a DC to DC buck converter converts this input voltage to a stable 3.3 volts before giving it to the RP2040 microcontroller. The 3V3 pin gives constant 3.3 volts which can be used to power sensors and other devices. The 5 volts pin is internally connected to the micro USB port voltage pin. So, make sure you are using a stable 5 volts supply at the USB port input. But to get the output from this pin, the VBUS bridge at the back of the board has to be soldered. And finally, there are two ground pins available on this development board. Now let's discuss about some test pads and jumpers available on the back side of this board. SWD stands for Serial Wire Debug, is available via the pads under the board. There are four SWD pads available for the Nina W102, which are Reset, Serial RX, Serial TX, and GPIO0. There are five SWD pads available for the RP2040, which are Reset, Ground, SWD Clock, SWD Data Line, and 3.3 volt power rail. As I said before, there is a VBUS jumper bridge at the back of the board, it is open as usual, but by soldering it we can get the output from the 5 volt pin. A 3.3 volt jumper pad, which is connected by default, but we can cut the solder jumper and give 3.3 volt regulated power supply through the battery. So far we have discussed a detailed overview of this development board. So what makes this development board so exciting? These are Arduino IDE, Arduino CLI, Arduino IoT Cloud, Arduino Web Editor, Wide Library Support and finally Arduino Forum Community. MicroPython is not yet officially supported, but it is possible to code MicroPython by burning the Raspberry Pi Pico bootloader. We have come to the very last moment of the video. Standing at the moment we will see if this development board is really value for money? Its best competitor today is ESP32 which is very popular, if we look at the features then RP2040 has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPIO pins, mic, gyroscope, and cryptographic processor. Whereas ESP32 has only Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPIO pins. But if we compare the price of the two, the original price of RP2040 is about $26, and the ESP32 price is only $6. Bluetooth Wi-Fi and GPIO pins are required when we are going to build a general-purpose IoT project, gyroscope mic or cryptographic processor are not required. They can only be used for some specific projects otherwise they will remain unused. From this, we can say that ESP32 is worth a lot more than RP2040 today. I hope you can learn something new from this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends.